Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Visiting Professionals. I am your host, Austin Slaybaugh, and today we are visiting with MC, DJ, and honor personality, Ann Carlini. Hi, Austin. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Riff. Hi, my name is Austin Slaybaugh. I'm a student at Oakland University. Most of my time is spent on campus in class. But when I'm not hitting the books, I'm visiting professionals. Today on Visiting Professionals, I made my way to radio station 101.1 WRAF The Riff to meet with radio personality and DJ Ann Carlini. Ann has brought her warm voice and sincere personality to the station for nearly 30 years. Ann has also kindly agreed to give us a tour of the station and talk more about her professional career. Ann, did you want to take me on a tour of the place? Sure, come on in. Yeah. So in this building, we share it with a couple other radio stations, our sister stations, 105 The Bounce and 94.7 WCSX. So basically, the Riff has its own wing. This is our hallway. Okay. And in the center, you guys all meet up and you duke it out. Yes, that's okay. exactly right. We call it the hub. <laughs> Not the ring, the hub. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty incredible building that they have for us here. So it's really, really nice. So here we start out with some pictures of days gone by, just kind of a compilation of people who have worked here. And, you know, I'm in several. Here's me with uh, Screaming Scott and Meltdown. That is uh, Ken Wazalewski's door. And he's in charge of all the promotions at the Rift. And he has such a great display of all the WRIF bumper stickers that we've had throughout the year. Some people collect them and some people sell them on eBay. We have uh, some offices here. This is Andy Green's office. You know, he's on the morning show. And uh, here is my boss, Mark Pennington. He's the program director. He's in there diligently working. <laughs> here we have Chuck the Freak's office, which I love it. I hope you get a shot of... Um, There's a little carpet in there. Yes, that's Han Solo going down for the count in one of the Star Wars movies. He'd probably hate me for not knowing which one. And uh, there's uh, Dave's office. And uh, here is Jade, our music director. Yeah, so this is Jade's office. And she's our music director and does a lot of production and social media for WRIF. Here is um, the main studio. And uh, this is where we broadcast from, from uh, after Dave and Chuck the Freak. This is where you work, right? Yeah, this is the main studio. This is where I'm at every day. And so where are we at now? This is the infamous Dave and Chuck the Freak studio. Um, WRIF is the only station out of the three that has their own morning show studio. It's really uh, convenient for the morning show because this way they have their own setup. It, they, it stays the way they want it. So it looks like we have a little bit of fun going on here. Yes. Star Wars. And this is all Chuck's, Chuck's uh, corner. And then um, we have over here, this is where, well, if you watch the Dave and Chuck the Freak Peep Show, you know Andy sits here. This is Lisa's. When I come in, I sit in this chair, and this is Dave. And then in here, we have um, the production room, the producer's room. And uh, this is where uh, they edit the Peep Show, which you can find on WRAF.com. Uh, they uh, bought this, installed this exclusively for Dave and Chuck the Freak so listeners can get a little insight as to what goes on in the studio. It's fun for them to hear them go on about some type of subject, laugh, carry on, and then be able to go to the website and then watch it as well. Coming up after this short break, we go live on the air with DJ Ann Carlini, and I sit down with Ann and ask her some important questions about her career when Visiting Professionals continues. Boys, hang on, boys! 
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Visiting Professionals. I'm at 101.1 WRIF The Riff, visiting with radio personality Ann Carlini. Before we sit down for our interview, we're going live on the air for a little crosstalk between Ann and DJ Meltdown. Well, this is different, Meltdown, because we're used to having microphones in our faces, but not normally cameras. So, well, welcome Oakland University, their media department, is that correct, Brian? Is in here filming us for some weird reason in case anybody actually wants to do this job meltdown can you believe that and i would have dressed up had i known there was gonna be cameras in there. <laughs> <laughs> i told these guys it's casual tuesday well it's dressing up to us is you know putting on the riff shirt but right well at least i'm so, wearing pants today so. yeah <laughs> thank god for that Alrighty, so, and before we get down into the nitty gritty of what your job is and what you do around here at the riff i kind of just want to get to know you a little bit how did you get interested in even becoming a dj uh, when I was in high school, a teacher came to me, and he actually was um, a part-time college uh, professor, and uh, he asked me to kind of read some case studies that he needed to have vocalized for, you know, this tape that he was going to teach his students with. And uh, so when I got done, you know, he said, wow, he said, you did that pretty well, and I said, really? And he goes, yeah, you ever think about maybe doing the announcements? You know, I, I don't know if you guys have this, but in high school, there was always someone on the PA saying, you know, coming up, uh, there's, uh, you know, good morning, everyone. There's a teacher's meeting at 315 today. There's an, an assembly, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so they actually let the students do that. I applied. I got it. I did it for two years. And, uh, you know, of course, being who I am, I turned it into my own little radio show and without even really realizing it, all of a sudden I was doing temperature and the weather for today and what yeah. was coming up for lunch, any excuse to stay on the microphone to the point where uh, the teachers were complaining I was taking up too much time. Oh, okay. So I just realized I really liked it and so I also was in um, uh, drama class and enjoyed being on the stage. And I thought that that's where I wanted to do. Mm. I wanted to go uh, into uh, acting. So I got ready to go to college and had everything filled out. And um, I was uh, actually walked out of the house after having my mom and dad sign the forms. And uh, I heard a commercial for Specs Howard and decided that that's what I wanted to do, become a disc jockey. Mm. Because at that point, you know, the school was just being a disc jockey or being an engineer. And so it was just focused strictly on that. And I loved music. And so I decided to take a chance. And it worked out. Yep, did, we're here, so it did work, yeah. <laughs> it did. Now, how much did your schooling from high school and college prepare you for what you do now? It prepared me for the job itself. And I, what I mean by that is how to work the equipment, you know, and how to do the basics. and. Um, above and beyond that, it's all experience and it's all drive to get better. You know, you can do the basics in any job and be hired, but if you have drive and ambition, that's what it takes to go further. School can only get you so far, you know, and, and once you get your foot in the door and once you land that job, then everything else is up to you. Now, being here at the Rift, how much uh, being on the job has it taught you so much more than what you did learn uh, back in high school and college? How much more would you say this job has taught you in what you actually do? Well, the difference is, is uh, when I make a mistake in school, it was in front of, I don't know, a <laughs> few people. Right. But now when I make a mistake, it's in front of like, I don't know, 1.3 million people. Yeah, there you go. It's, you it's a little bit more. And yeah. A little so, bit more, uh, there's a little bit uh, more pressure, yeah. and uh, mistakes will happen. That's not the issue. It's how you handle the mistake. That's the difference between, you know, a uh, rookie and a professional. You know, you've got to make your mistakes work for you. And I found that in my line of work, it actually shows the audience that you're human. Yeah, it's live radio. Things are going to, you know, screw up, not only because of the equipment, but then I've also 
had times on the air where, oh God, I don't even know where <laughs> I'm going with this. What am I saying? Or couldn't get a word out, you know, stumbled on it. Um, you know, and those are moments where you just have to pause, you know, know your audience is still with you and just move forward. You know, so mm -hmm. because I, I think the whole key is, is that make your audience comfortable with you. You know, the minute you start to get uptight and stressed out, they're going to perceive that and it's going to stress them out mm -hmm. in, a, in a small way. You know, it, it may not be entirely recognizable to them, but you want everything to go smoothly, mm -hmm. you know, and keep them with you. And do you have any uh, special tips or tricks that you use to kind of keep your anxiety to a low before you go on there? That's a really good question. Thank you. I try to have a lot of those lined up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that can be a problem for anybody in entertainment. You know, and it comes on in the most weird ways. You know, I mean, I've stood up in front of thousands of people and talked on stage at, you know, at DTE, at Joe Louis Arena, at the Palace. You know, and then one time I was in front of a group of people in a classroom of about, I don't know, 20, 25. And all of a sudden I looked down and my hands were shaking. It was like, wow, what oh. happened? It's like uh -huh. I just kind of got a case of the nerves. I'm mm -hmm. not even sure why. You know, so I, I think that all uh, performers kind of suffer a little bit with that. Mm -hmm. And I listen to a lot of interviews, you know, uh, with performers, actors, rock stars. Some of that's for my job because I'll get little tidbits I can use on the air. But uh, they all say the same thing. It's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, the nerves will get the best of you sometimes, and you just have to f find ways. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to have something that works, and I can tell you m my little trick, but it's not going to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. After overcoming your fears and eventually landing a job here, how long ago was that, by the way? I've been with WRIF for 30 years in November. Oh, wow, so you're coming up on the 30th year anniversary. Yes, I am. <laughs> how, did yep. you, how did you first get that opportunity or to receive a phone call? I actually had worked at a radio station before, uh, actually a few radio stations before Riff. Mm. And um, I worked at a place, uh, WNIC. And I was let go from NIC. And uh, they say, you're not a pro until you get fired. And I've been fired a couple of times. <laughs> Uh, Super so, pro over here. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I, um, I got a job uh, as a telemarketer, mm -hmm. and I was actually selling insulation. No way. Yeah. And a friend of mine um, got a job who also worked at uh, WNIC, got a job at Riff. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had lunch with me and said, Ann, you should be at this radio station. You know, and, and I said, I agree with you 1,000%. You know, I, my background's in rock. Mm -hmm. And so I started to write the program director. Um, I sent him an audition tape and a cover letter. And then three weeks later, I sent him another cover letter. And three weeks later, I sent him another cover letter. And each cover letter got a little bit more aggressive from, oh, I'd really like to work there, to I should be working there. I've been born and raised in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I'm the person that you need on the air. And I just was uh, really persistent. And sure enough, uh, somebody got let go. And there was an opening on the weekends. So uh, I got a phone call and went in for they snuck me in through the back door of the Riff Studios and put me into a studio and said, okay, here's some liners, you know, here's the tape, just go to it. You know, uh, we want to hear what you think the Riff sound is. Because at the time, WRAF had a very distinctive sound. The disc jockeys were a little bit different. You know, when rock radio first started out, everybody sounded like a stoner. I mean, it was like, hey, man, because it was yeah. the uh, exact antithesis of the hype. Hey, coming up, you know, it's yeah. 10, 20 and blah, 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 you know. So FM radio, you know, it was, hey, we're cool, we're hip. And so the riff was kind of like somewhere in between that. Mm -hmm. But I've been listening to the riff all my life. I'm born and raised in Detroit. I grew up with it. You know, so I did the tape. I had an interview and they hired me. How did you overcome being let go from your first job and then even going to selling insulation, you said? How did you eventually make it back to here? Were there times where you just thought maybe you should give up on it or were you always striving to get back into it? 
Uh, the first time I got fired, it was from like a, a, a station in Toledo. Mm -hmm. And it really rocked me. Um, and I, there were mornings when I woke up and I thought, wow, did I choose the wrong career? Because it takes some time. You know, I was, I was sending um, resumes out, you know, on audition tapes to several different stations. I wasn't getting any bites. And so I thought, you know what, uh, I'm not going to sit here any longer. You know, I've had a nice summer. I kind of, you know, took the summer to look for work and kind of, sort of, mm -hmm. took a little summer vacation. And I went back to school. And um, I learned how to do, uh, you know, kind of TV, what you guys are doing. And it resulted in a cable show for a while where I would interview bands and go out to different clubs. And, uh, you know, so it actually yeah, worked in my favor. Exactly. And so I, I just thought, okay, the least I can do, I've got to stay in my field, at least somewhere near it, until I can land another job. And it came. It, uh, of course it did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just knew it would. So when um, I got let go from NIC, the good news was is that that format, even though it was kind of what we call adult contemporary, it was pop music, and I had never played pop music before. It was always rock, but it changed my delivery on the air. You know, uh, my program director would call me and say, you know, uh, Ann, you got to smile. You, you, you got to smile. Because, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, and here's Michael Jackson on WNIC. And he called me one day and he goes, I want you to smile until your face hurts. I want you to hit that microphone. Because when you smile, your voice changes. And so I hit the airwaves and I thought, you know, I'm just going to sing song this. I, I don't know how else to do it because I was starting to hate being on the air because I just couldn't grasp mm -hmm. the concept. And I just went on. And uh, WNIC, Detroit's nicest rock, and here's Michael Jackson, you know, and, and I put that smile in, and all of a sudden I turned off the mic and I went, oh my God, that's it. I got it. And that, that station changed my delivery and put me right over the top mm -hmm. and made me sound like a professional disc jockey, polished me because I had to come out of my comfort zone, way out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So when I got to riff, I had the polish now all I had to do was just bring it back a little bit because now I was talking about Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what I found in my career is that the things that pushed me beyond my comfort zone are the things exactly what I needed in order to change. You know, and that's how I kind of approach every day. It's like every day I come in to the studio and think, I, I got to do a better show than yesterday. I have to, I, I've, I, you know, and even though I look at my ratings, my ratings are good. I can't ask for any more. Um, I still, there's an audience out there, and I want to deliver the best show I possibly can. Coming up, my interview with Ann Carlini concludes as Ann and I talk more in depth about her career at WRAF when Visiting Professionals continues. Ninety-four percent of people realize that littering is a major environmental problem. Yet the United States spends eleven and a half billion dollars each year on cleanup projects. Do your part. Reduce. Reuse. Recycle. Visit kab.org for more information. Welcome back to Visiting Professionals. Today, I'm at 101.1 WRIF The Riff, visiting with radio personality and DJ Ann Carlini. I asked Ann about her personality and sound on the air. And how much of your personality on air would you say is actually you, and how much of it is what you use to kind of have that sound to cater to your audience, or kind of have the riff sound, as you'd say? Okay, now, my personality. Um, you can't fake it. You just can't. Mm -hmm. The people who go on the air and they try to fake it, it's the audience will perceive that. So when I do stories and I have little comments, you know, I mean, yeah, I would love to be hilarious and I would love to have these, you know, little quips and all that. 
I'm not a comedian. As much as I would love to be, you know, Chuck the Freak, mm -hmm. who's brilliant at it, I'm just not. But yet, I do have an opinion about what's going on, and I will give that opinion, you know, when it concerns rock and roll and some of the antics that go on. So, yeah, that's me. So I think basically that if you, you and I went out, and uh, had a couple of beers, I think you would probably go, yeah, that's Ann. I'd probably go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, hey, we can but talk there. We'll catch up. <laughs> that would be a good night. <laughs> that, be a good night. Be, that might be one for Dave and Chuck. <laughs> so, you know, it, that's what I really strive for is just to, you know, it, you got to be real. You got to be mm -hmm. authentic. And now, you know, I'm talking to people, you know, uh, the millennials, the infamous millennials, uh -huh. and uh, they, you know, study after study comes back. They want authenticity over everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are uh, jaded to the hype and the phoniness, you know? So if I come across and go, hey, yeah, <laughs> that was a great band, and mm -hmm. this is a great show, you guys can go, no. You know, but if uh, I say something like, yeah, you know, uh, that song's starting to grow on me. I really didn't like it too much at first. It sounds more real. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really where I'm going, you know. And you know what? It's a lot easier to be yourself. Much easier. So it's like learn your craft, learn your basics, and then start to work your personality into it and find out what works for you. Okay. Now, also, when you're playing uh, your music on the radio, too, would you say it's more songs that you kind of like? Because I, I believe you said that you, you grew up with rock and roll. You love rock and roll, right? I do. Do you play more songs that you like and that you choose, or more songs that you think your audience would like and cater to? Well, um, radio is not about the music. It's about the delivery of the music. So uh, the music is chosen by focus groups. It's chosen by the audience and the radio station spends an awful lot of money to find out what the audience wants to hear and what will keep them on the radio station because that's our business. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of different avenues for people to hear music now. So we got to offer them a little bit more than the music. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean the music's great, um, but uh, the trips to Vegas help. The tickets help. Uh, you know, if I can say something funny every once in a while, and you have a nice, I have a nice voice, and you like to listen to me, and they'll keep you there. That's great. So it's all, it's a combination. Now, working in a male predominant industry, have you ever ran into uh, any trouble being a woman trying to get into it? Well, you know, uh, in radio, there's room for you know the. Midday jock is a woman. The news person is a woman. There's one weekend jock who's a woman. Now, there are certainly radio stations throughout the country that are breaking that mold. But I mean, the rules in radio used to be you didn't put women back to back and you didn't play even two songs from uh, female singers. I mean, that used to be like a, a standard rule, an unwritten rule in radio. And uh, of course, now that's changed. But still, there is that kind of attitude that you're at a male-dominated station, mm -hmm. and so not only are our advertisers looking for males, um, how, you know, how many women can you put on the air and get away with it? It's kind of like a programming decision. So uh, I don't know. I, I can't really speak to that. I think that there's a lot of women on the air right now and I'm really encouraged by that that women are still going into broadcasting you know and they're taking bigger roles on the morning shows and uh, bigger roles on the air and I think that's great and I think it's just I really think it's just a matter of time that's all. And what's the most memorable moment you have ever had in your whole career? The one that comes to mind first um, I was sent to Chicago to interview Robert Plant and uh, Robert Plant's the lead singer of Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. And I've loved Led Zeppelin. Favorite band, by the way, just, just so you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they sent me out there, and uh, uh, I had a little tape recorder, and I was backstage, and I was about, I don't know, 10 feet away from Jimmy Page, and I was too scared to go up and say hello. 
And uh, so I was waiting and uh, they kept saying, oh, Robert, just give him five more minutes, five more minutes. And of course, a concert is like it's closing in on starting mm -hmm. time. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm never going to get this. And so they said, stand right here. So I'm literally in the walkway to the stage. And uh, they brought Robert Plant out and he was standing right in front of me before I knew it. And I had the microphone up in his face and I had like a chance to ask like two or three questions and he did an ID for me. Mm -hmm. When I'm in Detroit, I listen to Ann Carlini at WRAF. Okay. So I'm just like stunned. I mean, I just, uh, time just stood still. Uh -huh. So I went to go to the seats and I'm in the front row. And not only am, am I in the front row, but there's no barrier between me oh. and the stage. So I'm literally like, I, well, I got my arms on the front of the mm -hmm. stage. And uh, so I got a couple of beers and I have a friend of mine next to me on one side and I got another, uh, some guy next to me, we're all huddled against the stage. So the concert goes on and they get to this point where it's like an acoustic thing and they bring out the tall bar stools and Robert Plant reaches down and he grabs his tea and he kind of looks up and he's standing about 20 feet away from me and uh, he looks at me and he goes like this. And so I took my beer and I kind of did uh -huh. that and I took a sip and I went, did that just happen? And the guy next to me grabbed me and literally screamed, did you see that? <laughs> and I go, oh my God. And we were like mm -hmm. screaming like little girls. I mean, if someone would have told me when I was 16 years old that Robert Plant would toast me from the stage, mm -hmm. it was just, I, I just never would have believed it. So that was just a moment that I'll never forget uh -huh. just because, you know, he's a legend. He's mm -hmm. just a legend. And, you know, and I've had the opportunity to interview people, you know, that I, I just couldn't even believe I was standing in front of, you know, but it, it's just been, it, it's just one of the great things about my job, you know, and I just am so grateful for it because mm -hmm. I just love music so much. So if I was to ask you, is this the best job in the world, you would say? <laughs> yes, Austin. <laughs> it is It is the best job. I mean, it, it is for me, you know, I mean, because I get to come in and I get to entertain. I get to do that and I love doing that. And I get to play music and listen to music, you know, but once again, you know, I just, I try not to take it for granted, just try to enjoy mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and try to do the best for my audience every day. Well, and oh. thank you so much for your interview. Oh, I really appreciate you. it. It's been a rocking time down here <laughs> at the Riff. <laughs> well, thank you, Austin. I appreciate it. And good luck to you and your career, too. Thank you so much. I'll be coming to visit you one day. Oh, <laughs> I made my day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to another episode of Visiting Professionals. I'd like to give a special thanks to Ann Carlini and 101.1 The Riff. It's been a great time here. Until next time, I'm Austin Slaboff, signing off.